everybody, John and good here. Hello and good afternoon greetings from Arlington, uh, Texas, I believe. This is a brand new overpass. Even the GPS is not uh, registering it. That's where the Six Flags is at, right there. All right, we are on our way to Fort Worth, Texas, about 30 miles, picking up a load and headed for Caldwell, Idaho. Caldwell, Idaho is located west of Boise, Idaho, almost to the uh, Washington State uh, border. How do you say that? Border or state line? Or does it make a difference? I think border is between two countries, right? State line is probably more, uh, what would be the word? Proper? Anyway, our pickup appointment is at 3 p.m. As you can see, the local time is 1237. Temperature is at 82 degrees. Just to show you the route for this trip. There you are. Before I started rolling, this had, the GPS had me going to, uh, what is going on here? The GPS had me go to Amarillo up to Denver, up to Wyoming, but now it's different. Don't know why. But I think I like this route better. From here to Caldwell, Idaho is uh, 1,622. Someone asked me uh, what was my opinion or my take on the slavery, slavery, slavery during Bible times, most especially the Old Testament. From what I understand, yes, there were slavery in the non-Jewish people, or like Egypt where they worked their people to death, there were beatings and all that stuff. And of course, that is egregious and sinful. But there was also kind of a, another form of slavery, which first of all, we have to, we have to uh, understand that the word and languages and sometimes meanings evolve. Even in our generation, we see that, right? But in biblical times, slavery was basically, um, it was like being employed with someone. Instead of, I guess from what I understand, instead of being, instead of calling it employment, they call it slave. And there were very, very, very strict rules about that. And I 
believe at the, at, was it the third year or the seventh year the slave were um, were set free they were they were free and most of them if they wanted to stay and become part of the family uh, they would have their ears pierced by their employer it was a public display of he is now employed voluntarily but there were very strict rules that you could not mistreat your slaves or your employees I think back then when resources were very scarce what happened was or what the custom was you would I hate the word I hate to use the word sell your siblings or your children and I think I think some parts of the world still do that. Let's just say I give I give you my child to be employed for three or four years for so much money. So that way my child can send me the money and help the family have the family income. What else is there? Or if you are homeless and you needed a job, you go find someone and become their servant. You have to remember the word slave is not, it doesn't have that bad reputation as we perceive it as we do today back then that was just another word for employment so yeah basically you you went with someone had a vineyard had something you work out a certain deal for a length of time people in the Western world know that slavery is still a very common practice in the Eastern world even today there are still slaves out there but not the kind of slaves that the Bible standard had from what I understand back then in biblical times resources were very scarce there was no shopping mall or store grocery store you could buy your food with people had uh, had a hard time finding something to eat Jobs were not readily available as we do today. I don't think their generations back there were picky on ah, that's too much hard work or ah, I don't like that work. I don't like that job. 
I think back then if you uh, found a job you were very fortunate to find a job you know which leads me to a somewhat of a I don't know a personal opinion that this country needs to get overhauled it, our generation especially the kids generation right now they're so spoiled rotten because they haven't they've been having it so good for so long and I'm a firm believer that people really shine in the midst of adversaries adversities It's like a, it's like a lemon sitting on the, uh, on the table. It looks pretty, but it doesn't do anything. But if you squeeze it, that's when the real aroma comes out. You know what I mean? I mean, nobody wants to see war. Nobody wants to see famine. But if that's what it takes to wake up people and be better for it, I don't know, man. If you want to build your muscles, you got to flex it. You got to exercise it. Surely, living in comfort is not the end goal. As one pastor I heard yesterday, if we're trying to change the government into a better government and better society, where everything is easy, everyone is happy, everyone has a full stomach, everyone has a job, all we're doing is making this world a better place to die and go to hell to. Right? I mean, it's like, okay, let me, let me live in, in the same scenario, I suppose, as, uh, In the same scenario as, you know, live it up now, and then later, that's when the judgment comes. Don't get me wrong, I, I for one, I'm a, I'm a creature of comfort myself, don't deny that. But we all can agree that if this country were a little bit stringent, a little bit hard up, I think our people would be better off. I mean, look at this this way. Which is the which of the which of the country has the strongest? Uh, children do you think uh, the United States Iran North Korea uh, Afghanistan the Philippines I mean if you were to bring five different children from different countries and put them all in an island which one do you think is gonna go down first I 
I can honestly say that I think Filipino children would fare much, much better than American kids would. But as I said, these are all just my opinion. You know, one thing that I also was thinking about, I was thinking that our country are beginning to be like truck drivers. It's getting harder and harder for all of us to cooperate with each other. It's getting almost impossible to agree and accomplish anything that is good. We are so divided in a country that we, you know, you have your view, you're so, so, so strong in your view, I have my view and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand on my hill and die for it. Yep. Eventually, and as a whole country, we're going down. We're going down, right? I think we've come to the time in our society where. We're willing to sacrifice our country so that each of us would would win our agenda regardless of the outcome. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but It's like the truth doesn't matter anymore. The truth is irrelevant. The point is to win it at all costs. And I think each party or each side is guilty of that. got three more miles to go I don't think I've ever been to this uh, shipper before oh by the way I am picking up this load delivering to Caldwell and then also picking up at the same place and delivering to Pennsylvania. I think it's Manchester, Pennsylvania. More than probably a miracle is what we're going for. Let's just say we are neighbors and I go over to my fence, dump garbage into your lawn and, you know, throw a sack of firecrackers in your house. Surely you would call the cops and have me arrested and rightfully so, right? If I hired somebody to burn your house, that would make me guilty of arson. So, in that 
analogy. Why does uh, I, be, I think I know where this is. This is also a miracle. Why does Iran get to shoot missiles into Israel and nobody nobody does a thing? Palestinian people go to Egypt leaving all there is to leave leaving in uh, Gaza or in yeah in Gaza are uh, all the Hamas people then eradicate the Hamas people the terrorists And then once they're cleaned up, United Cold Storage. Buddy. Can't help it. Door 
44. Yes, um, do I slide the tandems back? Yes, or? Go ahead. Yeah? yeah. 44. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. has be has this shipper listed as different name I don't get it CHS foods US gold storage and it says United I don't know they're probably one in the same right about here yeah, I see it I see it Slide the tandems. We'll catch you later. Thank you.